from ABC News. This is Primetime Thursday with Diane Sawyer and Charles Gibson. Good evening. It's good to have you with us. And we welcome you to an all-new edition of Primetime Thursday. And tonight, we begin with a love story, which is also a story of laughter and loss. It's been just six weeks now since the death of beloved actor John Ritter, and it turns out for those who must go on, there are no simple rules. Nothing black and white. Just as Amy Yazbek says, different colors of grief. Amy Yazbek is John Ritter's wife, and tonight she tells her story for the first time. I love him. I still love him. You know what it is? This is, it seems like a big mistake. All of, my daughter said, when I was talking to her, I said, this is a kind of a surprise when we're talking about it, but it's a bad surprise. And she said, surprises aren't supposed to be bad. This is a mistake. And I thought, yeah, that's true. Tell me about the first time you met him. The first time I met John was at a read-through of the script of Problem Child at um, the director's house, Dennis Dugan's house. And he was so sweet and so nice, I thought he was doing a bit. I thought he was like doing like a little, I'm a sweet, nice character guy. And he, he forced me to eat a bagel and cream cheese because he thought I was too thin. So that was nice. That was very fatherly. So was it love at first sight? Falling in love at first bagel? Mm, nah. I don't know. I don't, I'm, I'm too smart for falling in love at first sight. I don't think so. The smart, funny redhead from Ohio, Amy Yazbek, who came to the big city after losing both her parents, her father to a sudden heart attack, her mother to emphysema. John Ritter was already a big star when they met, and the two of them ignited together on the sitcom Wings. I'm glad you're here. Really? No! <laughs> together on the Bill Cosby Show. we breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone said the two of you, it was like watching lightning. Amy, doing? Amy and John. Wow. Really? Oh, that's so sweet. In a good so, way, Lightning? In a good way. Okay. <laughs> it was as if they were already married by their own alchemy. They didn't bother to make marriage official until Yazbek, eight and a half months pregnant and 60 pounds heavier, was swimming in the pool and Ritter had a surprise. It was August and I was just floating there and he was walking across to me and he went, ah, like he, and he swore like he had cut his foot on something. So I'm thinking there's sharks in the pool because I'm paranoid and he, lifted and he goes, what is this? And he handed me my wedding ring, uh, my engagement ring, this ring. A very modern marriage with the old songs they loved. For the first dance? At our wedding? Uh, yeah. Um, you belong to me. You And the honeymoon? She said it was in the car on the way back to the airport when they finally got a moment's peace because Stella, one year old, had fallen asleep. How was he different at home? What didn't we know about John Ritter? That's the freakishly amazing thing. You did know John Ritter. He was that guy. He was that, that guy. Moody? Not moody. Tormented by career sometimes? Not tormented by career. In between jobs, when people would say to him, hey, what'd you do since, I mean, years before I ate some rules, what'd you do since Three's Company? What happened to you? He'd say, oh, I'm in real estate now. Completely serious, or I sell shoes, and give them great details about that. And at a town famous for drugs and wild parties, they liked staying at home and playing running charades. He read so much he was so well informed and he loved he loved 
TV, loved TV, loved movies. You know, sometimes he'd say, well, I, I might go get a bite, and come home, and he, I'd say, do you go to the movies? And he'd how do you know? And he would have um, popcorn in his chest hair. <laughs> He was a man so loving. As far as we know, there was only one touchy area. Suzanne Summers. After she reached for more money and it ruptured the hit sitcom Three's Company. Chrissy. But there was something with Suzanne Summers because they hadn't spoken. Oh, I know. When I yes, when I met him, they had not spoken in whatever, however many years. But yeah, I, I pushed them together at an event. And I said, somebody's here that you haven't seen in a long time. And, said, huh. and she, she came off stage and he came up to her and uh, I believe kissed her on her shoulder and said, hello, darling. But Yazbek says the real center of Ritter's life was just like the one on Eight Simple Rules on ABC. He was above all, she says, a father to the three older children from his first marriage, Jason, Carly, and Tyler and their own daughter, Stella. Now listen to me, young lady. I'll have respect here. I will have you. <laughs> he could tune into you, who you were at that moment. The, the, the big three <laughs> kids had it, and he got to see each of them go to college and find and or be in the search for finding their bliss and supporting it so beautifully, along with their mom, who is wonderful they've they've they're so buoyed by that I'm ready for my close-up Mr. Hughes and she says by the living sound of his laughter his voice still almost every place they turn for Stella age five and he did the voice of Clifford the big red dog anybody want to go on the Ferris wheel and she plays computer games with his voice coming out of you know, and I hear John going, good job. Oh, that was great. Try again. Not quite. And then, a week after his death, Yazbek is driving and accidentally turns on a machine that records messages in the car. Another old song they loved, Chantilly Lace. Hello, baby. I was listening to Don't Forget to Get the Thing, Two Loaves of Bread, and, and the next one was John's voice. Hello, baby. Will I what? I just went, oh, no. And I was looking in the rearview mirror as we were driving, and I said, I have a tape of Daddy singing. Do you want to hear it? Yes. Had he been sick? No. Not at all? Not sick at all. No, nothing. Complete shock and surprise. Really healthy, getting in actually great shape. There was no way to know what was going to happen. And to predict it, Except when you go back and look at his life, he talked to you like that was the last time he was going to talk to you every time he saw you, you know? He'd give you a little summary of how wonderful you were and how proud he was of you and you felt loved and supported and sent off with a little bounce in your step out into the world. He did that every day. And when we come back, the day she lost him. The hardest part, breaking the news to their five-year-old daughter. She stood up on the bed and she put her arms up in the air and she said, drop him. I said, what do you do? I mean, I didn't get it at first. And she said, I'm talking to heaven. Drop him. When Prime Time continues. in the cake. Yeah. Oh, come on now. Right here, right now. Hey, hey. This is the place. It's in the cake. This is the place I want to be. Yeah. I was alive and I was alive. I was alive. I was alive. It's in the cake. I was alive and I was alive. I waited, waited. Hey. Right here, right now. Hey, hey, hey.
My allergies will never ruin my life again. Full strength Claritin tablets are now available without a prescription. Non-drowsy 24-hour Claritin. And Claritin never makes me drowsy, so I can do what I want, when I want. Full prescription strength Claritin. If your pets leave your carpet with hair and odor, try new and improved Arm & Hammer Pet Fresh. With Pet Hair Release, so pet hair vacuums up more easily. Plus our baking soda to get deep down odors. Doesn't just cover them up. Get Arm & Hammer Pet Fresh with Pet Hair Release. Can you hear me now? Good. Only Verizon Wireless covers the most people. Good. In the most places. Good. From country roads to city streets. Good. It's the nation's largest, most reliable wireless network. Good. But still we test. Good. Retest. Good. And test some more. Good. So you get great coverage. Can you hear me now? And fewer dropped calls. Good. Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. Good. Every man knows there's nothing more romantic than doing something special for your wife. Whoa, those scrubbing circles will take care of that. That's brawny. Ooh, those tightly woven fibers, they make everything shine. That's brawny. Right into the towel. Beautiful. There you go. It's all ready. It's all right. Triple action performance. That's brawny. Get your Halloween going with the light, crispy, chocolatey taste of a Kit Kat. <laughs> Friday. You write, Princess Diana predicted her own death. She did. What did she know and why did she fear for her life? Now, her trusted butler talks about it all to Barbara Walters, even who the princess really wanted to marry 2020 Friday. They were a couple who never had a honeymoon. Because, as Amy Yazbek says, her life with John Ritter was one big honeymoon. But six weeks ago, that ended when what they thought was food poisoning turned into something unknown and terrifying, and a mother had to tell her only child the worst news imaginable on what should have been a day of celebration. You know, it was Stella's birthday when it happened. So we opened lots of birthday presents and rolled around and did puppet shows and played Lilo and Stitch soundtrack and goofing around the house and I've, I've all day I just something wasn't sitting right and I thought is it because she's at school on her birthday I just something and then I got a phone call that uh, he called and he said that he thought he had food poisoning and I thought he might you know that sounds right people get it and that he didn't it didn't feel good and then, so he said, M maybe you should come over here. And I said, oh, and I thought, what does he need me to come over there? And then I talked to somebody else from the show, and they said, you know, he's having chest pains. And so we're going to go across the street to the hospital. And it was the longest drive of my life on <laughs> that LA traffic, man. I mean, <laughs> I knew. I don't know what it is. Maybe because I lost my parents, one fast and one slow. I don't know. It just, it smacked of a kind of scary familiarity to me. When I got to the hospital, they thought he was in the midst of having a heart attack by the numbers and that they were going to do a catheter um, to see what was going on in, in the heart. And then at that time, if something needed to be fixed, fix it. And he was scared of a procedure, but he wasn't, he didn't make me feel afraid or afraid for him. She says he kept worrying about inconveniencing his friends on eight simple rules while she reassured him. Don't think about it. They, people, you know, for smaller things than this, they say, no, somebody's having a bad hair day, they don't do a show. Don't worry about it. And but he was so sweet and we got to say I love you and then he went into the room where they were going to do this stuff. Did you have a sense it wasn't going well when you were sitting and waiting? Yeah. Did they come out a lot? And Before that. I knew, I knew. I don't know why. They couldn't figure out what it was and he was having trouble during the angiogram which happens sometimes but he was, they were losing him and kind of bringing him back during that. They found a uh, this problem with his aorta, this tear, 
and I could just kind of tell by the mood of the people walking by, I, you know, that something was going. I listened to every sound in that hospital, and I, yeah, I knew I wasn't going to take them home. I don't know why. And yet, so many people speculated that maybe something could have saved him. That's if you detect it. It was so torn that the blood was going other places, not as, it was round as hard, and it was, it just doesn't work. And the more that you try to restart the heart, the more it tears. It was impossible. The actor John Ritter was only 54 years old when he died quite John Ritter last was night. stricken while he was working on the set of his With latest sitcom. Same playing bubbling and zany characters. Did he know at all that he had an iconic place in American hearts, if not American yes. culture? He got a, a kick out of it, but he knew better than to take himself seriously. And he was innocent and modest about how much people loved him, but indeed they did. I said to my sister, who knew I was married to Elvis? And I, he would have liked that. Who said the most consoling thing? Was there, was there anything where you thought, that really helps? I think the most consoling thing was was said by John and before he died but it's private but it's oh it's general lovey-dovey stuff but the fact that I got to say it to him and with him and that that was what where we were, which is always where we were in our hearts, but it is so comforting to have said it to each other before he went. And she says it's also a comfort to know that the show Eight Simple Rules is going to continue as he would have wanted. Recently, it was announced that James Garner will come in to play a grandfather for the grieving kids on the new show. John loved him and thought he was an amazing actor. It's interesting, I wish I could tell him, you know. And what about Stella, the five-year-old who grieves in real life? How did you know how to tell her? Uh, I went home and I slept with her, and then I told her in the morning. I don't know, hardest thing I've ever done. How often do you and she talk about it, Stella? Oh, we talk, Stella and I talk about it even when we're not talking about it. Do you let her see you cry? I can't help it. Yeah, I, uh, funny you should say that, I let her see me cry occasionally because I want her to know that it's okay when she does. But there's kind of a, when she cries real hard and I'm holding her, I cry but I don't make any sound because that's too scary, I think, for her. So I let her make the sounds for me, but she feels me, and she knows that I'm right, right with her and going down the same path, and sometimes she'll see me and I'm just kind of staring, and she'll say, Dad? Yeah, she goes, yeah, darn it! And the one time that we both just let loose was on the third episode of the shows that he had made at the end, um, of the end of Eight Simple Rules, they did a little montage of kind of behind the scenes thing and then he waves goodbye at the end and, and I, don't, I wasn't really going to watch it with her but she caught me watching it and she got out of bed I was recording it and we watched it together we sat in our bed and watched it and at the end she stood up on the bed and she put her arms up in the air and she said drop him <laughs> and I just I said, what are you doing? I mean, I didn't get it at first. And she said, I'm talking to heaven. Drop him. And it just, I said, Stella, I know for, and of course I'm, and I said, I know for sure, because I always say, I don't know, and I don't know. I'm not scared to say I don't know things. I said, I know for sure that's not going to work. And she said, but what if we never tried? And that's what would have worked. And although 
I know that he trusts us to take him with us in our hearts. Off you go.